This week's episode of our show is sponsored by Fables, Pirates of the Ethereal Expanse, the latest series of adventures from Ghostfire Gaming. Fables is an episodic adventure released in six parts, releasing one part every month. This particular Fables lets you live out your pirate fantasies and sail the ethereal expanse in a magical ship. Pirates of the Ethereal Expanse has everything that you need for ship combat with new player options and new monsters. If you're looking for that high fantasy adventure where the stars are their own kind of sea, it is really worth checking out this adventure because there's lots to offer, including full VTT support as well. So sign up for your subscription today by following the links in the description below. And now, onto this week's episode. Greetings! My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today we are covering our top spells for Warlocks in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And the answer is Eldritch Blast. It's Eldritch Blast. Alright, bye. Bye, bye. Yeah, it's, it's just Eldritch it's just Blast. Eldritch Blast. It's just... It's just Eldritch Blast. This and all these notes. It's just Eldritch Blast. This is just a piece of paper that says Eldritch Blast seventeen times. Is this another? Times. These all say Eldritch Blast. Everything is just Eldritch it's Blast. It's just Eldritch Blast. And so, if you want to hear more about Eldritch Blast, we're going to talk about it in great detail for half an hour. Get ready. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get rolling. In all seriousness, we are going to go over spells from 1st level to ninth level in this video and talk about our favorite picks for Warlocks. Now, obviously, if we start with cantrips, we will talk about Eldritch Blast, but it should be noted that Warlocks have a much more interesting spellcasting mechanic than any other primary spellcaster in the games of D&D, and your spell choices are extremely important, because the reason why we're riffing on Eldritch Blast so much is that Warlocks get less spell slots than almost any other spellcasting class, and... They do come back on a short rest, but using your spell slots for great effect and then defaulting back to your Eldritch Blast while your spell does what it does is going to be really important. That's why we want to look at spells that either have impressive effects or lasting effects that will stay on the battlefield, usually involving concentration in some form or great area of effect spells that you can use to really do some damage. So let's talk starting with Eldritch Blast. So we're going to start by acknowledging Eldritch Blast. That is your cantrip pick. There are exceptions to this if you're playing a Hexblade Warlock. Even then I still think it's worth taking Eldritch Blast, but there are other ways to build a Warlock. But I think you should take Eldritch Blast. So jokes aside, why is Eldritch Blast so good? It's a cantrip that as you level up, you get extra attacks with it that each deal 1d10 force damage. So it has good range, it is a spell based on attack rolls, and it uses a damage type that I think you can count on one hand the number of creatures in the monster manual that actually resist force damage. Like, it's like Helmed Horrors and something else. There's not a lot of creatures that resist force damage. Not to mention that Eldritch Blast for the Warlock, there's a ton of invocations for the Warlock that allow you to amplify or change the way that Eldritch Blast works, allowing it to actually be more versatile than almost any other cantrip in the game. Being able to add an invocation to add extra damage to your Eldritch Blast, or knock enemies back, or pull enemies forward, are all very interesting, especially when you pair those mechanics with concentration spells that are area of effects, or pulling or pushing your enemies into danger. Because a Warlock has really, for most of Tier 1 and Tier 2, two spell slots, you really need to look carefully at spells that require your concentration and thus last for an entire combat encounter because as a warlock if all you're going to do is spam damage dealing spells you're going to very quickly run out of your spell slots and now you're going to just be back to eldritch blasting anyways whereas if we have a concentration based spell that we can use alongside eldritch blast or other cantrips or attacking if we're a hex blade then we have a really interesting interplay and a really interesting strategy that we can bring into combat. Once we have that mastered down, we can start looking at other spells that are going to augment the Warlock's utility as well that we can use in various different ways. As we go through the Warlock spells, we are going to be focusing on the core Warlock spell list, 
not what is gained through your warlock patrons. So depending on your warlock's choice of eldritch patron, this might change your choices as you level up and you might choose ones that are given to you by your patron instead of the ones here. Now moving on to the spell selections. So what can we pair with Eldritch Blast to make the most out of it from our spell selections or what spells are going to get the most mileage? Starting with first level. I don't think we're going to surprise anybody here with my first choice, which is Hex. If you're not taking Hex, then you're not Warlocking. Uh, maybe. The Hex spell allows you to target a creature, adding additional damage when you hit that creature, and allowing you to choose one of its ability scores, and then that creature gains disadvantage on ability checks of the type that you chose. Note that this isn't saving throws just ability checks. When, we, when you pair that with your other team members, maybe somebody who is grappling the enemies, or uh, if you have spells, or you or the other spellcasters have anything that requires ability checks to escape, then Hex can be really, really powerful. Hex also scales beautifully with the, with the scaling of Eldritch Blast. Basically, every beam of Eldritch Blast is gonna get an extra D6 damage. So if you are a fifth level Warlock, using two beams of Eldritch Blast. Each one is going to be doing 1d10 plus 1d6 damage, plus probably your Charisma modifier because you took Agonizing Blast. It's a great default, but I will say that Hex does start to lose some of its mileage because it does require concentration. And it's not always the case that the extra damage that you could get from Hex is going to outperform the extra damage that you might get from another source. Hex is worth 1d6 extra damage when your Eldritch Blast does one beam, 2d6 extra damage with two beams, and 3d6 damage with three beams. So basically, you're looking at a range of about four extra damage to 14 extra damage tops. So if there is a spell that will cause more damage in a round than three, se then four, seven, 10, or 14, depending on how many beams you fire, it might be better to use that spell instead. Of course, the situation can always vary, but even in the case of a solo boss monster, Hex might not be your first pick. I think the other great first level pick though is Armor of Agathis, which is great for boosting up your temporary hit points. One of my favorite things about this spell is that it scales really, really well. Not only does Armor of the Gathas make your squishy warlock slightly less squishy by giving you more temporary hit points, it can be a very reliable source of damage. Armor of the Gathas cast at a fifth level spell slot gives you 25 temporary hit points, and anybody that hits you with an, with an attack now is going to take 25 cold damage. It's very likely that those 25 temporary hit points are going to enable you to soak two or three hits, which can result in upwards of 75 points of damage, which is pretty good even for a fifth level spell slot. And that's where I think Armor of Agathis actually is the unsung hero of the Warlock first level picks. Everybody talks about Hex, but when you're getting up to those higher levels, I actually think that you get more mileage, you get both defense and offense from Armor of Agathis that you wouldn't get from Hex. Now, Hex is still very useful if you are in those situations where ability checks are coming into play, then I think it might be the better choice. But choosing between which of these two you want to go with is going to be a choice that you're going to have to make through your entire career as a Warlock. Now, as we move to second level spells with the Warlocks, this is where I actually feel Warlocks get a lot better options for utility social interaction and exploration than you do for anything de for dealing damage. And so my favorite pick here for a warlock to pick up now and keep for the rest of your adventuring career is invisibility. And I love invisibility. It slices, it dices, it does so many different things. It doesn't actually slice and dice, but you can use it as an exploration spell, as a spying spell, and you can even use it as a combat tri trick for escaping. However, it's really useful because of the way that it scales with Warlock spell slots. Because as you upcast invisibility, you can target more allies or more creatures with the spell. So when you have invisibility right away at third level with your second level spell slot, yeah, you might cast invisibility on one person. Once you get up to fifth level spell slots, however, invisibility is now targeting four people, which could be your entire party. And the ability to have your whole party invisible for an hour is really great for exploration and for infiltration 
but it can also be an amazing way to save your entire party member's life. I've seen a warlock cast invisibility on an entire party who was heavily damaged, and that gave them the breathing room they needed to escape, retreat, recuperate, and then come back and hit the enemy hard again. So don't underestimate invisibility. It's a wonderful spell. My choice for a second level spell for a warlock is Suggestion. Now Suggestion has much more of a play in social situations, but can also have great effect in combat situations as well. Suggestion is a great pickup for certain warlock patrons. There's a lot of thematic choice here. Suggestion allows you to select a target, make a suggestion, they make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they have to act on your suggestion. This can undo encounters in a very simple way. And that's where, even though this isn't necessarily a big damage dealing spell, it's not an area of effect, it's not something that you're going to be blasting with Eldritch Blast to make it even better, Suggestion can take a bad guy who's about to run up and stab you and have them turn around and walk the other way and start counting tiles on the floor, a grain of sands on the beach, or just dance until the music stops. There's so many fun ways that you can have Suggestion play into your games, and I think that it's a very powerful spell in a Warlock's arsenal. As we move on to third level spells, one of my favorite Warlock-specific spells comes into play, mm. and that is Hunger of Hadar. Now, there are some things that we want to talk about with this spell, but first and foremost, the theme of this spell is so warlocky that I just absolutely love it. You're opening a portal, there's tentacles, there's monsters from other dimensions, they're probably eating your enemies and sucking them through into a void. I recently watched Event Horizon, and I feel like you're creating an Event Horizon yeah. when, you, when you do this. Uh, it's terrifying. And it does multiple types of damage. It slows your enemies. And if you pair this one with your Eldritch Blast, if you've taken the invocations to knock enemies back, they're going to have a hard time getting out of Hunger of Hadar. Now, the one thing that I will say for Hunger of Hadar is when you gain access to third level spells and have the option of picking this up, it's a great choice. But the one thing to note about Hunger of Hadar is that it doesn't scale like some of the other spells that we are talking about. So it might be an amazing choice for the next four to five levels, but then once you're getting those higher level spells, Hunger of Hadar does start to fall off and it might be worth replacing with a more powerful spell. But four to five levels is a long time in game and Hunger of Hadar can get some really good mileage during that time. My favorite picks for Warlocks at these levels were the summon spells that were introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which include Summon Fey, Summon Shadow Spawn, and Summon Undead. And I'm also going to sneak ahead and to get to the fourth level spell, which is Summon Aberration, and just group them all together because I think that choosing one of these summon spells for your Warlock is really awesome. And here's why. First of all, these summon spells, as your Warlock, scale really nicely with your scaling spell slots. Not only do the summons get extra attacks by being upcast, but they get more hit points and often their damage of their attacks increases as well. And they're also gonna benefit from increases to your spell saving throw DC, as well as your spell attack rolls, which are both things you're gonna be caring about as a warlock. In addition, all of these summon spells last for one hour, which means that your warlock can cast them before combat starts to have your summon creature on the battlefield and start ordering them around without needing to spend many actions or anything from yourself. And so you're able to now do all your fun Eldritch Blast stuff, do all your fun bonus action things that you can get with invocations of different kinds while still having a really awesome, sturdy companion on the battlefield that can kind of be like a manifestation of your warlock patron. I really like the role playing element that you can get from the summon sh summon spells because it feels like your warlock is receiving a emissary of your warlock's patron to help you in battle. Um, and all these summon spells are really, really, really good and have some hidden gems in them. The Summoned Undead has a putrid form that can poison enemies and even paralyze them. The Shadow Spawn can frighten your enemies round after round. The Fey can teleport and does a lot of damage. 
and the aberration can can take a beholder form that flies and effectively shoots two extra eldritch blasts per turn so you can get a lot of extra damage out of these summons you can get a lot of battlefield control you get another body on the board that absorbs hits i think the summon spells are solid gold for any warlock and you should absolutely take one with your warlock I want to add in that these summoning spells having an hour-long duration means that they can take part in exploration. If you're doing a dungeon crawl, sometimes there's nothing better than having a big undead summon. If you're not sure about that hallway, it looks suspicious, send the undead summon forward. If it gets hit by a flamethrower or a whirling blade, now you know it's there and none of your party took damage. Yeah, you don't want to lose the summon, that might be a waste of a spell slot, but having an extra meat shield to scout ahead, to be an extra presence on the battlefield for exploration means, is just an extra benefit for an hour-long duration for those summoning spells. They'll last several combat encounters if, you, if they're being well used, so they, I think that they really do help with the Warlock's mileage in a really big way. And unlike hun Hunger of Hadar, which has to be created in a specific location, the summon is going to follow you. <laughs> there is also an honorable mention for this level where Fly is a really good pickup as well. If neither of these choices stood out to you and doesn't fit the theme that you're trying to build, or if you just have an extra spell that you want to pick up, Fly is a great choice. It scales similarly to Invisibility, where the more the higher level that you have to cast it, the more targets that you can have flying. And again, for exploration, and combat. This is incredible. What's scarier than a warlock with a bunch of eldritch blasts? A flying warlock with a bunch of eldritch blasts. How are you going to get into the castle where the gate's locked but there's a window up on the tower? Fly for your whole party is going to solve so many of those problems. Speaking of great spells that scale, this is also where the fourth level spell Banishment is a really great pick for a warlock. Not only is it handy to have that security blanket to banish the extra planar entities that your angry patron might send to kill you if you get on their bad books, um, Banishment is a spell that doubles its targets when it's cast with a fifth level slot. So it's a great battlefield control spell to just remove an enemy from combat, and because you get two targets instead of one with a fifth level slot, it's just a wonderful wonderful tool in your arsenal as a warlock. Earlier I mentioned Hunger of Hadar, but it might be worth trading that out for this next spell, Sickening Radiance. Yeah. Sickening Radiance is maybe not as visually appealing as Hunger of Hadar, but still pretty terrifying. And being able to drop that onto the battlefield and using the same idea that we mentioned before, where you can have the invocation to knock enemies back into spells or pull them forward. If you have both, either side of the spell area that they try to get out of, you can oh, pull them yeah. back in or knock them back in. And that's just really evil to play that game with Sickening Radiance, which not only does a ton of damage, but also adds levels of exhaustion. If you can keep your enemies in that area long enough, they just get absolutely debilitated. So it can be a really powerful combo if you're using the Eldritch Blast mechanics with this. Now, one honorable mention for fourth level spells, of course, is Dimension Door. It can be, I think if you can take Dimension Door, you should take Dimension Door because you never know when you're going to need to teleport out of dodge and bring a friend with you. It's really useful, and it's also great because it is not a concentration spell, That's but it's one that's almost always worth casting in a variety of ways. So I kind of like to play my Warlock where I'm going to drop my big concentration effect, Eldritch Blast around, and keep that last spell slot open in case I need to Dimension Door somewhere. <laughs> Now, as we move on to 5th level, an interesting note that we are going to pick some spells, but there might be a case where your 5th level slots are best used to just upcast spells that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. In my experience looking at the Warlock spell list, you can get a lot more mileage out of some of the earlier spells cast at 5th level than you can out of a lot of the choices on this list. As an example, Hold Monster is a great 5th level spell, but... Banishment will remove two enemies from the battlefield. Sure, you won't be able to beat them up in the way that you can with Hold Monster, but that is an interesting way to trade things off and, and a, a, an important consideration if we're directly comparing two spells, because for a Warlock, that is the choice. 
Do you hold a single enemy so your party can attack them? Or do you banish two enemies and maybe even then beat up whoever's left o over? These are the interesting calls that you have to make. Another choice for 5th level that might stand out is Synaptic Static. Very powerful damage dealing spell. The question then becomes, would you rather upscale something like Sickening Radiance, which stays on the battlefield, has lasting effects, and you can push your enemies back into that, or use Synaptic Static? Now, of course, you could use both. You could Synaptic Static the enemies that you've knocked back into your Sickening Radiance, um, if you're going to expend all your spell slots in that way. Because it also has a debuff effect attached to it, it can be another really effective option for a non-concentration spell if you need to throw down that extra damage over and above. So it, I think it's a good choice. The other spell that I think is great to have on a Warlock, but one that I would not use in combat, is Scrying. Because Warlocks get their spell slots back on a short rest, having Scrying as a Warlock is really cool because it means that you can start Scrying on your foes at the beginning of the adventuring day or the end of the adventuring day and get your spell slots back and scry on them again. It means that with the casting time of scrying and the amount of time you get to spy on somebody, you can really scry a lot as a warlock. And I think that the information gathering that you can get out of this is almost going to make a divination wizard jealous. As we move on to the Warlock's 6th level spells, this is where we have the Warlock's Mystic Arcanum feature. So a Warlock doesn't get true 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th level spell slots. They choose their Mystic Arcanum, which lets them cast one of these high level spells once per day. So these spells are not going to come back on a short rest, they're going to only come back on a long rest, and you're not going to have the high level spell slots to upcast your lower level spells with. So you're kind of fixed and limited with these, but they're still powerful tools in your arsenal. Once again, I like to bring the big guns. For me, my two favorite picks here for 6th level options are going to be Eye Bite and Mass Suggestion. Mass Suggestion is just an absolutely crazy spell um, that affects a ton of targets. If you want to order a whole bunch of enemies to start doing the electric slide or tell them to go just start count pounding sand, it's a great spell for just solving big social problems or even ending combat encounters. On the other hand, if your Dungeon Master is a little bit more restrictive with how they interpret the suggestion spell, Eye Bite might be a safer bet to use through an entire combat encounter to provide battlefield control round over round. Going back to summoning spells, everything that we've talked about earlier still applies here, but there is a great 6 level pick for a summoning spell, and that is Summon Fiend. If you're playing a, a Warlock of the Fiend patron, uh, I think that you need to take this spell. Oh, yeah. When you use Summon Fiend, if you take the Devil form for your Fiend, your summon has a flying speed, is a large creature, and has a ranged attack. Large creature implies that you can ride on top of it. So now you can ride a Devil flying around the battlefield blasting people with your Eldritch Blast while it hits people with its ranged attack. That's that's a lot of power for a 6th level spell. Again, it lasts an hour, and it's going to be a really powerful meat shield and companion on the battlefield that's just going to be terrifying. Again, if I was playing a Warlock of the Fiend, this is a must-have. As we move up to 7th level spells, I think that there's really only a one option here, and it's Force Cage. Force Cage is perhaps one of my favorite spells in the entire game, and as a Warlock, I think it's a no-brainer here, especially if you took Sickening Radiance so you can uh, throw your enemies into the microwave. There is a case that you could take Plane Shift if you're looking for something a little bit different, a different flavor, maybe depending on the theme of your Warlock or the theme of your campaign. Plane Shift might be very useful. Other than that, I wouldn't really say there's many picks that I would choose beyond that, and mm -hmm. even I would probably go to Force Cage as yeah. a default. Uh, so that's probably your best pickup. Now, if you're playing a Warlock to get 8th level spells, unfortunately this is where the, the, the field really starts to narrow. But there's a few interesting options here. I think Dominate Monster is a great choice. It's just that you're going to have that competing for your concentration with all of your other spells. But if there's a beastie that is scarier than one of your summons, Dominate Monster might be a good way to have a nice thrall for a little while. And if you can't control it, make it useless by casting Feeble Mind on it. Yeah. 
Uh, Feeble Mind is a pretty dangerous spell if you can uh, get the target to fail their saving throw. The one thing that I will say with Feeble Mind is that most of the intelligent characters that you're playing against who you want to Feeble Mind might have some of the best saving throws mm. against Feeble Mind. That's one thing that I've ran into in my use of this spell in the past, but when it does land, oh boy, are, are they messed up. Finally, if you do advance far enough to get a ninth level spell as your Warlock, um, I hope you're playing the Genie Warlock because then you can get Wish. But if you're not, <laughs> um, there's a couple other really good options um, for your ninth level Mystic Arcanum. I think probably the um, most flexible is True Polymorph because this is going to let you assume a variety of different forms. Um, if you want to transform yourself into a dragon, you can. If you want to transform one of your allies into a creature, you can. It's a very strong, effective spell that can have a lot of uses, both in combat and out of combat. I agree with True Polymorph. If we had to look at a second option, maybe Psychic Scream for doing a boatload of damage and... Uh, I don't know, there's some really creepy themes of your warlock screaming from other planes of existence with a chorus of voices that blows up people's heads with yeah. their psychic scream. So that could be a pretty cool choice, but I would even lean towards true polymorph. Yeah, I do think, looking on it, the, the Mystic Arcana options for warlocks going into higher levels of play, it is pretty slim pickings overall even with all the additional spells that have been added across a variety of extra source books it's a hard call and i but there are some powerful options here and i do think that a high level warlock with force cage with feeble mind with with summon fiend and this arsenal actually is a very very great character to play with a lot of flexibility to them um and it has a lot of reason to play a very a high level warlock once you combine that with the invocations and the fact that you're getting even more fifth level spell slots that are automatically being upcast to that level. I think you end up with a pretty unique arsenal of spells and a unique play style as well compared to other casters. So this has been a look at our top spells for warlocks in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Tell us about some of your favorite pickups for your warlocks in the comments below. Is it Eldritch Blast? I hope it's Eldritch Blast. It's probably Eldritch Blast. Probably Eldritch Blast. But there's a lot more than Eldritch Blast. If you like the content that we do here on YouTube and want to help support our channel, please consider becoming one of our patrons. You can find out how by following the links in the description below. And if you want to see a cool warlock in play, you can check out our live play in the Worlds of Draconine, which airs Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we got plenty more guides to making characters for D&D 5e right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.